Great pleasure. Right, your book starts with the basics, which for us is certainly a good place to start. Uh, quantum physics, explain it to us. What, 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 what are they studying? What questions are they asking? Quantum physics is probably the biggest revolution in science ever because it has changed the way we think uh, about reality. We don't think about reality anymore in terms of little object moving around uh, with properties uh, pushed and pulled by forces. And also, it's, uh, it's a great story because uh, it was found, discovered, invented, created uh, by kids, essentially. Um, young scientists in their early 20s who... Uh, used ideas from uh, from philosophy, from data, from uh, laboratory, to put up this completely new understanding of reality, which has worked fantastically. I mean, we have computers, lasers, atomic bombs, uh, uh, medical devices, what, you name it. The model technology is based on it. And still, 100 years after its discovery, because it's a story of 100 years ago, we don't have clear exactly... Um, in spite of this success, uh, what we really have understood about, about the world with quantum mechanics. So there's a very lively discussion in the world of fundamental physics and philosophy about, okay, so what is it we have understood <laughs> yeah, what about <laughs> the world? So, so, that, so it does, you, we no longer have this view of big objects being pushed and pulled, sort of traditional physics. What are, are we talking about the very, very small? Is that what uh, quantum mechanics looks at? So the, 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 the forces that exist at a very, very small level? Yes, exactly so. But not because uh, it only applies uh, to the very uh, small. It applies to everything, except but for the big objects, the quantum effects are negligible. So you don't see them. So you have a pen in your hands, and a pen is always have a position, a velocity. It's just a pen, and you describe it in the way you see it, you perceive it. It's good enough. But if you could look at this pen with extreme uh, detail, uh, precision, uh, where it is, how it moves, you would discover that uh, you cannot assign it uh, clear um, uh, properties at every moment. Because uh, uh, the properties depend on how it interacts with, uh, uh, with, with something else. And for small objects, this becomes uh, very, very uh, dominant, this yeah. quantum effect. So an electron is not really like a small stone. It's a funny thing. that in, it's, not, it's not like a stone. It's like a sequence of, uh, of snaps here and there. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you can say when, presumably, is the next snap. Uh, and what are you going to see next? And how is going to interact with something else next. But in between, uh, you cannot say where the electron is. So uh, Richard Feynman, I think, famously said a version of if you think you understand quantum mechanics, it means you don't understand it because it's too complicated to, to understand. So I feel in good company in that sense. Though. But by what you're saying, do you end up in a situation where you, you, you say things like, I read once someone saying that this version of events means that either space doesn't exist or time doesn't exist. So we're dealing with very large properties that people just take as, take as given. Does quantum mechanics make uncertain everything that we think is certain? Yes. And how can that actually be in the real world? How, what do we do with that? If we don't think time exists or space exists, what, 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 what do we do with that information? Look, in a sense, we already knew that, right? Because when we... Forget physics, forget basic, forget the stones. And Easily the, done and, for me, but yeah. Right, but when you talk about, you know, politics, psychology, love, uh, countries, whatever you want, uh, you know that what you're talking about uh, is not really defined by the thing itself. It's defined by, 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 by a network of interactions ar yeah. around it, right? Um, what is a country? Well, there's some geography, there's some politics, there is some literature, there's some mind, there is, all this is, is very vague and uh, if you try to pinpoint it, uh, it's not the thing, it's how interact with the rest. So we knew that already. What we did not know before quantum mechanics uh, is, is that this is true all the way down, all the way down to the elementary pieces of nature. Uh, we, we sort of were hoping, thanks to classical physics, that, all right, so at, at the macroscopic level, everything is complicated and, and everything is in interaction. Everything comes out by, by, by a network. But, you know, down there, there are really atoms and, uh, and that's it. That's a solid aspect of the yeah. world. And that was wrong. The solid atoms themselves are also existing because they interact with something else. Um, so you cannot, it's a sort of the, the fall of the dream of separation, of uh, the possibility of going down to a basic level in which there is an elemental object with properties. So it means we should stop thinking about things like how did the world, be, how did the universe begin? Because it, that's sort of 
predisposes that there was a sort of with thinking things in the wrong way, maybe. Uh, no, we, we can keep talking about how the universe began, but what we mean <clears throat> is how this, you know, this network of interactions, uh, uh, sort of, uh, how you can think about the past. That's that's uh, the past being the set of interaction you have with with, uh, with instrument and galaxies have with one another. It's a separation doesn't work. Yeah. Um, it's a um, the world is better thought as a set of events, like the snaps I said, yeah. which are relational, are, are, are the moments in which uh, what we call one object interacts with what we call another object. Yeah, that's... that's